Hello everyone, and welcome to Anno 1404, aka Dawn of Discovery. This is a German release, and I have to say, the Germans make the coolest games. I really wish I knew why. Maybe it's just because they're Germans and they're awesome that way, but pretty much every expansive uh, German release that I've played has been absolutely stunning. This one included, another worthy German release mentioned would be... Uh, X3 Reunion and X3 Terran Conflict. Both of those games were absolutely fantastic. But, uh, yeah. On to the game. Basically, what this game is about is, uh, what every s city builder is about, and that is balancing your citizens' needs and wants with your coffers and economy. I do believe I have found my dream city builder. You start out with nothing, just a ship, a flagship with a bunch of materials on it. You land on an island, you set up a warehouse and a marketplace, and you build a city from it. Uh, <laughs> you start out with just these, these peasant houses, uh, which give you very little income. They just uh, work the jobs and stuff. Then they upgrade to these citizen houses, then then they upgrade to these patrician houses, and after that to the noblemen. I haven't reached noblemen stage yet, so I'm stuck with just the patrician citizens and peasants. In order for you to upgrade from each level to the next, you have to provide them with the needs that they want. These are the peasants' needs. Their uh, need for food. And this is the wheel, so all the peasants need is fish. They need company. In order to get company, they have to have a road connecting them to a marketplace. They need for drink. They, uh, drink cider, which you can make from cider plantations here. And need for religion, which you can get by, uh, producing... or, uh, building churches and chapels and such. Once you do that, and you grant them ascension rights, they can upgrade to citizen level. Citizen level need a lot There's more. There's nowhere in the world finer than here. Thank you. Uh, citizen level is much more complicated. For food, they need both fish and spices. Now, this is one of the hardest parts that I've found. Getting spices. In order to get spices, you have to build it your own trade, sh a trade ship or just some flagship or something and go explore cross the seas and find the Orient, which are kind of, um, well, I'll show you. These guys. And these guys, you have to make friends with them by, you know, buying them gifts and getting your diplomatic relations up. And you absolutely have to make friends with the Orient, or else you won't get the Orient technology, which is uh, you're here. quite knowledgeable about Oriental architecture. Thank you. And that gives you the spice plantations, as well as allows you to erect Orient settlements which is what I've got over here. And you need Orient technology in order to colonize desert places like this place. The nomads that you uh, can build houses for here, they give much more income than the normals, than the normal citizens do. And uh, you can build spice plantations, date plantations, goat farms for milk. But uh, in order to do any of this, you have to have a Noria Noria has fertilized the land around them. It's interesting technology, but you can't build any, any kind of plantations on infertile land like this desert over here. The Orient also give you access to quartz mines, which you can combine with uh, other materials to make glass, which you need for the higher, for the more uh, higher end stuff. So yeah, that's how you get spices. In order to transfer the spices over to your other colony, you have to set up a trade route between the Orient, your Orient Settlements colony and your normal colony. Now you can do this actually very easily once you get used to it. You open the trading routes menu and uh, you can create your own route. This is my route between my Orient Maybe Settlement has stopped producing goods. and uh, my main island. So you can just basically add things that you want to be lo get loaded onto the onto the ship from here and then you can choose what you want to unload on the other settlement and the ship will automatically take them to and fro which is very nifty 
and I like it a lot. So you don't have to manually transfer goods all the time. And this is especially useful. The game would be pretty much implayable without this trading route system because the usually would be a happy yeah, man. Nice. Uh, a lot of times you will have an island settlement somewhere that is completely not self-sufficient and without an ax without a trade route access to your home island, it would not survive. And and uh, as annoying as that is, it's also realistic and very nice. So I'm just going to expand the settlement a little bit here. Build more nomad houses. Give me some more tax income because they're dwindling there. Kind of. <laughs> Gotta build roads for everyone. Uh, also, the and so, in order to get your um, your citizens to upgrade, you have to have yeah, going up in the wrong place. In order to get your citizens to upgrade, they also have to have lots of cider. They need clothes. In order to make clothes, you need uh, hemp plantations, which you could then send the hemp that you harvest to the um, weavers' huts and they produce linen garments for them. I need lots of those. There's Your people tons are longing of, for company. That's nice. There are tons of different uh, resources, luxury resources that you can get in this game. Like, for example, I'm trying to upgrade my patricians to noblemen, and in order to do that, I need leather jerkins. In order to get leather jerkins, I have set up my own little production island simply for producing goods where I've made some pig farms and tanneries. You, make the t you send the pig skins to the tanneries, and the tanneries make leather jerkins, which are clothes. And uh, there is combat in this game, but I generally avoid it because, you know, I'm a peaceful person, and I just like to build. Building is something you can do a lot in this game. The graphics are absolutely stunning on on high. Your water on very supplies high graphics. are running out. That's nice. I mean, I'm running this game on medium. That's another. That's probably the one and only issue with this game. It requires an insane computer. I literally have never seen a game with this high uh, specs. It's almost ridiculous actually I have let's just say I have a very very good computer and this game lags even on medium settings I don't even know why it might be just the game engine that's lagging but uh, if I zoom all the way out the game becomes extremely choppy you should see it when it's on very high I can run in pretty much any setting uh, you know at, at this distance like it seems the higher out you zoom the choppier the gameplay becomes. So I generally just stay at this view. So yeah. Um, there's uh, lots of different things you can do. You can customize your cities. You can add decorations, which I haven't really done very much. You can customize your harbors, build storehouses, so you can make extra... Um, so where you can store your extra access goods. You can... Uh, set up trade routes between other civilizations, like this guy. So tell me, how are things with you? You can set up uh, trade routes with them, and they can, you can buy and sell from them using your own ships that you've built from your shipyards. If I can find it, where am I? From your shipyards, which you need rope to do, and you can make rope from uh, hemp. Just like you can make uh, linen garments from hemp. And a lot of the objectives in the game require you to have a very advanced civilization. So, uh, in order to do that, you need uh, to make your citizens happy. And I. Oh shit, I'm not making them very happy. I need more clothes. They need clothes! They need more clothes! Because they're prissy and spoiled that way. <laughs> Alright, well, uh, it is 4 a.m. right 
now and I've been up all 